Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Games and Things. Folks, no one in East Tennessee comes close to the selection of home theater seats that Games and Things has in their showroom. All types of functions, every color in the rainbow, seat, some seats with the Power T logo. You got to see it for yourself. Get down to their showroom right off Lovell Road here in Knoxville. Or if you can't make it out there, check out OurGameRoom.com. It's very impressive, all of the different types of home theater seats they sell. And if you're thinking, well, I don't know if I need that, it's basically just the world's greatest lazy boy. <laughs> For the people that remember, i got a lazy boy. Uh, this is like that on speed. Games and things, give them a shout. You'll be very impressed. Their home theater selection is unbeatable. All right, uh, time for a quick slant segment. Everybody gets a turn here, and I will start with Will Overstreet. Yeah, the biggest thing I have from coming out of this next week is something that's a repeat from last year, which is Garantano got knocked out, didn't go through the concussion protocol at the right time last year, Maurer in this game. This has to start being taken a lot more seriously, and it has to start from the top man down. I'm not saying he's taking it seriously, but the words he uses to play a, a different role and say something different, saying things like he was dinged up or he had his bell rung, that used to be in my day what you could say and was perfectly okay. In this day and age, you have to take it seriously, and it has to start from that man up top saying, guys, if this, this can't happen again, a guy can't hold his head after a hit, he can't stumble and fall down, and he stays in the game. He has to come out. Otherwise, this is going to cost him whether he wins here or not. You continue this way, something bad happens, and he'll be fired and gone no matter what he does because it'll be a bad tragedy on your hands. All right. Josh Ward, your quick slam. Uh, it's a big win for Tennessee. Vols had to have it against Mississippi State. I would point back to a year ago on the road, a bigger win against Auburn. There was a lot of excitement, but there was still a long way to go at that point, and it didn't work out, as you know, as the season went along. So at 2-4, and four, Tennessee had to get the win. If you lose, it looks much worse, I'd say, moving forward. But the players have to remember there's a lot of work to be done to try to get to a bowl game, which is a possibility. It has to be their goal. Coaches have to remember there's a long way to go. Late last season, Players have probably ridden a little bit too hard. You have to lighten up with some of the depth that's maybe going to be uh, a challenge the rest of the way. And fans, it's a reminder. Big win, something to build on, but a long way to go this season and long term with the program. I'm going to hit on that in a second. <laughs> David Evan, quick slam. Yeah, I think uh, the, the Brian Maurer's health is obviously a concern, and, and if he's not available, he shouldn't play. But big picture, uh, I think no matter what happened yesterday, you have to sort of move forward with Maurer at this point. Uh, Jerry Carantano has done everything you'd ask him to do. He's been the consummate teammate. But the reality is that for the first month of the season, the coaches just really had no idea what he was seeing and what he was reading. And Maurer made some mistakes, but that first interception in the red zone, he just got deceived by a really good defensive back who made a really nice play. You can kind of see what he was thinking and he read it wrong. On the second pick, he thought he could make a throw that he really can't make. But you right. knew what he saw and you knew what he tried to do. And I think when he has guys open, when he has guys that, that he can hit and he's got a clean pocket, he's putting it on them. Uh, and he's giving Tennessee a explosive element to their offense that they have not had. Five, uh, or they had seven completions longer than 20 yards in their first three games against the FBS competition. They have five against Georgia. Uh, when Maurer is on the field, he throws his first one, a 28-yarder. He can do those things and, and allow those things and, and let it fly and be a little, le a little less conservative than, than Garantano was the first month of the season that really hurt their offense. This is not an offense that can grind people up. they got to be able to stretch the field, and he gives them that opportunity. Live with the mistakes and play with the big play potential that he gives this offense. Okay, very good. Here is my quick slant, and I've got a visual aid to go with it. <laughs> the issue is uh, we ask at the talk show, have they turned a corner? That's what everybody in East Tennessee is talking about. I've seen the message boards. I've seen Twitter. You now they turned a corner today. Where did they turn the corner last year? Now, this is – you started with West Virginia, and everybody at the beginning of the year thought, oh, we've got as much talent. We just add coaches now, and it's going to be – now you lose. So you come back, you beat ETSU. The next week you look like crap beating UTEP, so it's kind of a flat line. You get stomped. People were still thinking, well, we're even with Florida. No, Georgia beats you. And at that point, you're thinking, okay, this team's doomed. So they go to Auburn and win. Aha, well, the corner's been – no, it hasn't. You lose to Alabama. You lose to South Carolina. You look awful against Charlotte. They look so bad against Charlotte, people were saying, well, they've got the same amount of talent in their roster. <laughs> <laughs> no. If you believe in that, then you believe South Carolina has as much talent as Georgia. It doesn't work that way. But anyway, you think they've turned it around when they beat Kentucky? No, it goes downhill again. My point is this. There's no such thing as a trajectory – in football. The only way we'll know 
that something has been a turning point, that a corner has been turned, is in hindsight. That's the only way you can do it. I mean, perfect example. Butch Jones won 11 straight games, beat Florida and Georgia. Who would have seen, oh, yeah, they're going to go 4-8 and eight in a year? Didn't see that one coming. So the idea that you turned a corner, you only see the corner has been turned in your rearview mirror. So for us to talk about it, we're all just guessing. Remember that. Don't ride the roller coaster, in other words. <laughs> all right. When we come back, what have we learned over the last 24 hours? Got an interesting stat on uh, turnovers I'll share with you. We'll talk about all that stuff more in the final word. Come on back on the Sports Source. <laughs> 